Hi, preschool friends. How are you doing today? I hope you enjoyed your beautiful weekend and this wonderful weather we've been having. I sure have. All right, let's start with our Hello Neighbor song. Hello, neighbor. How do you do? I'm so happy to see you. Greet your neighbor. Boogie on down. Give a high five and turn around. All right, friends, let's finish up. Sign, or let's start off, sorry, by signing our names in for today. Go ahead and pause for a moment. Sign your name in and then come back once you're finished writing your name. All right, I think you're finished writing your name. I'm writing my name, Miss Stephanie. All right, here is my name. Awesome, I hope your name is done. Now I'm gonna show you some letters. I want to see if you remember the name of the letters. And I'm wondering if any of these letters are in your name. Or maybe they're in my name here. Let me write my name back up here. See if you can tell if any of these letters are in my name or in your name. All right, let's see. Our first letter right here. What letter is that? Here's the capital and the lowercase. The letter T. These are the capital and lowercase letter T's. Do you have a T in your name? Mm. Here's one in my name. There's a T. I have one T in my name. Go to another letter. Our next letter, who knows what letter this is? Here's the capital in the lowercase. It's the letter A. Do you have an A in your name? Maybe you have more than one A in your name. Look, I have an A in my name. Next letter. Right, here's our next letter. This letter is W. Oops, <laughs> I'm thinking of two different letters. Silly Miss Stephanie. <laughs> I'm thinking of two different letters. This letter is a W, the capital W and the lowercase w. I don't have any W's in my name. Do you have a W in your name? Oh, all right, here we go. We'll do one more letter. All right, what letter is this? What letter is it? Oh, I see a capital in a lowercase S. Miss Stephanie starts with the letter S. Nice work, friends. All right, we're gonna do a little brain work activity. Little brain work activity. I'm gonna tilt my screen down here. And I've got different lengths of blocks here with me. All right, let's see. Three different color blocks and they're three different lengths. I wanna know which one looks the longest. Which color block looks the longest? We're gonna put them in order from tallest to shortest. Which one is the tallest block? Green, green is the tallest. So we'll put that over here. All right, now which one of these is next? 
What's the next tallest? Blue. Blue is the next tallest. Green, blue, and then red is the shortest. Awesome. You guys figured that out. All right. Let me mix them up. Let me mix them up again. All right. Let's see here. Hmm. Make it challenging on us. Make it challenging on you. All right, here we go. I mix them up again. All right, which one is the tallest? Let's see if we can figure out which one is the tallest. Blue, blue is the tallest. All right, so we'll put blue right over here. Which one is the sh in the middle or the next tallest? Oh, look, it looks like it's right in order already. Red and then green. Thanks for your help putting the blocks in order. Nice work. All right, and now I see you again and you see me. So last week we were doing something special in a bottle with some seeds and we were growing it and keeping track of how tall the grass in our terrarium was growing. Wow, this is super tall. I can see some all the way up to here. It's in between, let's look. Wow, in between the number four and the number five between the number four and five. My grass has grown so tall in the terrarium. And I didn't need to water it anymore because all the water was sealed in here and I put it in the sun. The sun kept the water circulating in my bottle, making it rain in the bottle all by itself. How neat. So don't forget we had the other two bottles. This one here and this one here. All right, let me tilt this down again. So this is the one that had the sun and rain in it. But this one, I forgot to put it in the sun. You can see right there, I had the sun crossed off. But the grass grew because it had water. But look in the difference and how much the grass grew. Look at the difference in the color. Remember, the sun is what plants use to combine or to make food during the process of photosynthesis. Plants need sun to make their own food. And these, they have water and they, they have some oxygen in there, but they don't have any food. They can't make any food because they don't have that sunlight. So they're growing with the water, but they, they don't look very healthy, do they? And as a matter of fact, some of the grass is actually turning white at the bottom. And a lot of it hasn't even started to grow. You can see all those blue seeds still sitting in the bottom there. So this one did grow and I can see some of the pieces reached up to the three. Most of it's down here, like the two and a half, right in between the two and the three. Some of it's reached up to that three, not all of it. And then this one here, I didn't give it water at all. I put it in the sun so it can make its own food, but what did I forget? Water, none of it grew, none of it. All right, so that's where our chart behind me comes in. Let me move my computer so we can see just your chart right here. Oh, there's two charts because I have two groups. All right, so this is the chart we're looking at right here. My bottle with grass, the tallest grass had water and sunlight. And it grew the tallest, but then when I forgot the sunlight, the grass still grew, but it didn't grow very tall. And it actually looked kind of sick, didn't it? 
And then, oh, down here, my bottle without the water. But I put it in the sun, it didn't grow at all. No water, but it had sunlight. It didn't grow at all. So that's how we keep track. You guys are actually like little scientists period in this experiment with me. Scientist is actually kind of a career. You can learn a lot of information by doing experiments like we just did with the terrariums. So I bet people a long time ago did some kind of similar experiment. They planted some seeds and some didn't get any water. Some of them didn't get any sunlight. And the ones that got water and sunlight grew the best. And that's how they knew plants needed water and sunlight. All right, little scientists, kiss your brains for doing that project. All right, and today your job is to fill out your terrarium journal, terrarium tracking journal. We filled out our prediction for after two weeks. Now you can type in your growth. How far did it, how tall did your grass grow and draw your picture of what it looked like. That's your work for after our meeting. Now we're gonna move in to a story. We're changing our thoughts. So scientists, um, it's kind of like a career we can do when we're grown ups. There's other careers too that we can do as grown ups. And there's people in our neighborhood that help everybody out. And those are different careers that you could also do. So we're gonna take a look into different careers or jobs around our neighborhood. Let me share my story with you. The story we are going to read today is called People in Our Neighborhood. Here it is. And remember, this is on Epic. If you don't have Epic, it'll be good. I think through summer, I'll keep it open for you. Um, so let me know so we can get you hooked up with an Epic account and make sure you have everything you re ready to learn. So people in the neighborhood. This is written by Michelle. Garcia Anderson. She put the words in the book, so she is called the author. The author is Michelle Garcia Anderson. So people in the neighborhood. I wonder what kind of people we'll find in the neighborhood. You might already notice some things on this page. Hmm, who do you see on this page? Let's find out a little bit more about the people on our page. All right, here's the first one. Oh, wait, this is different. Hmm. Oh, I remember. So this book is special because it has information in it that we can learn or nonfiction book, nonfiction. It means it has information that we can soak into our brains, people in our neighborhood. So this next page, is actually called the table of contents. It tells us what is in the book and where we can find it and which page. So it looks like the story starts right here. People in the neighborhood starts on page number three. Then we can find some pictures in the meaning of those pictures on page 15 in the photo glossary. Then this book also has an index, which means the it'll tell you on, on page 16, it'll have a list. Sorry about that. It'll have a list of all the different things um, you might find throughout the book and it'll tell you what page it's on. And this one is about the author. So it also gives you information about the author on page 16. So there's two different things on the same page. All right, so let's start here. People in the neighborhood. So this, the, this picture that you see here with all the buildings and houses and shops and stores, this is called a neighborhood. Now, if you step outside your front door, you might look around and see lots of different houses. You might see a grocery store or maybe there's a grocery store down the street. 
maybe there's a doctor's office or a car shop. Look outside your door when we're done with our meeting. Look outside your door and see all the different things you can find outside in your neighborhood. And there are many people in our neighborhood. For example, who? what kind of person is this? Firefighter. Firefighters are in our neighborhoods. And what do they do? They put out fires. Look at him firefighting or fighting this fire right here. Oh, and look here. What kind of career is this or a job? This person in our neighborhood. Mmm, that looks delicious. Super yummy. Who could this person be? A baker. A baker. I'm going to start our list right now. All right. So the baker bakes cakes. They also can bake bread, pastries, all sorts of yummy things. Let's see what's next. Hmm. Who do you think this person is? What does it look like she's doing? Looks like she's helping this little girl on the page. The little girl looks like she, it looks like she's feeling well right now, but maybe when she went in, she was feeling sick. And the doctor helped her get better. Doctors are in our neighborhood. They help people who are sick. Hmm. Have you seen these people around before? Who are they? Hmm. They are police officers. And what do police officers do? Police officers help keep everyone safe. They help keep everybody safe. Can you think of a time you may have seen an officer and what they were doing? Maybe they were help directing traffic. Maybe they were helping somebody who was in trouble. They have lots of jobs. Ooh, and what is this person doing? Hmm, looks like he's fixing something here. He's fixing a door and the knob on the door here. This person is a builder. He's building houses or fixing houses in the neighborhood. Wow, that's a lot of people, a lot of jobs in our neighborhood. Look at all of them here. There's even more. Can you see all the different people you see around here? Who might you find in your neighborhood? Can you name some of the jobs that you might see these people and what they do? There's a lot of different uniforms here too. Who's in our neighborhood? Oh, and look, here's that photo glossary we were talking about. Do you remember what this person was called? Oh, there we go, sorry. This person was called a baker, the person that bakes pastries and bread or cakes. We just talked about this one. He is a builder, a person that builds things such as houses or fixes things. This is a firefighter, a person who helps put out fires. I keep touching that, sorry. And this last one down here, the picture of all the houses, grocery stores, offices, that's called your neighborhood, your place where people live and work. Wow. All right, let's finish our story. There was that index right here. It talks about where to find the baker. Oh my goodness, these pages are so touchy. Where to find the baker, bakes, builder, firefighter, houses, and police. All the words that you might find in this book and it gives you the page number, you would find them. And then here's about the author, Michelle and Garcia Anderson. You know what? And she was a teacher. A teacher is another career we can add to our list. All right, wow, we've got quite the list already started. All right, finish the book, all done.
All right. Look at our list of jobs. Firefighter, baker, doctor, police officer, builder, and a teacher. Can you think of other careers or jobs you might see? Hmm. Talk about it with your grown up after your meeting today. And you can even go for a walk and look and see different things around your neighborhood. That's all I had for you today. Bye.